Hi, my name is Leonardo Flores, and I'm an associate professor of English at the University of Puerto Rico in Mayaguez. Last year, I was the Digital Culture Fulbright Scholar, and I enjoyed the wonderful resources and hospitality that the good folks at Bergen, Scott, Jill, and the rest of the Digital Culture program offered. Uh, I'm shooting this little video from home because I can't be there with you, and as I understand, it's a little wet and it's a little dreary, so I thought maybe you could enjoy a little Puerto Rican sunshine. That's my house there in the background. So, without further ado, I'll be presenting the analysis I have done through visualizations of I Love Poetry using ELMSIP knowledge-based data. I know it's a long title. Just read it up there. Uh, Scott, you owe me for that title. Here we go. So what is I Love E Poetry? This is a resource I created through a scholarly blogging performance. And the idea was I set it up as a constraint to read and critically reflect upon a work of e-poetry every day that includes nights and weekends, leading me to revisit works that I knew, discover new ones, and just really expand my knowledge of this emergent poetic genre. I started back in December 19, 2011 and did not miss a day for 500 days completing that first phase of the project on May 2, 2013. Now, in addition to being just a, almost an exercise for myself, uh, it was also uh, designed for others, obviously. It's a quick reference for those, to those unfamiliar with e-poetry. It provides these concise entries that provide poetic, technological, theoretical, literary contexts. Uh, I offer brief, close readings of the poems and give readers a, little, a few strategies to approach the work. In general, my goal was to broaden the audience space for e-literature, uh, inside and outside of academia. I really that's why I, I hooked it up to social networks and really hoped that this resource would go beyond the classroom, go beyond the scholarly conversations, and, uh, I don't know, maybe even go viral. For example, this is a sample, uh, an anatomy, let's say, of an I Love E Poetry entry. Uh, we start with the title and the author up top. Uh, I provide a link to the actual work a screenshot so people have a, an initial taste of what it is this work is about. And I start with a, a, a description. Uh, and that description is kind of coded with some of my metadata, which I'll describe later. As you read the entry, uh, you can see that I expand to talk about some of the contexts, uh, whether they're media, technological, or cultural contexts. and. I provide a little analysis and a little guidance for readers who may not know how to approach the work. And I like to conclude with a little critical teaser. I have to thank uh, Patricia Tomasek for that great title, that great way to call the ending. It was something I picked up through many years of teaching poetry. Now, at the base of every entry, you can get a link to the Elmsip knowledge base, and we'll talk about that partnership in a moment. Uh, there's some social media buttons there, little Creative Commons license information. Uh, you can lead link to other entries. And at the very bottom, notice the tags, which here I use for authors, and the categories, which really are, are where the juicy metadata is. So you'll see the different kinds of metadata in a moment. So what do I encode in this, in this knowledge base? Uh, some of my metadata includes platform, year, obviously author and title, uh, a genre, what publications or venues, whether it's an exhibition, a collection uh, was used, is there any software programming, uh, platform authoring systems being used, and behavior, which is a typology that I developed for my dissertation. Now this typology, 
you can see the biggest words are from that typology. Basically, I talk about what text does, whether it's static, kinetic, scheduled, oral, responsive, or mutable. So, and this right here, what you're seeing is this visualization of all of the tags uh, used in I Love E Poetry. So, obviously, the largest ones are the ones most used. It's a wordle visualization, so frequency becomes size. And it gives you a taste of the sort of a systematic application. You can see some of the other biggies, HTML, JavaScript. We'll talk about those in a moment. Now, let's talk about the ELMSIP knowledge base connection. Um, I Love You Poetry is an ELMSIP, and it's a work of critical writing. It connects to many of the creative works that are in, the, in this knowledge base. And uh, you can see the, the page for it. The partnership started back in March 2012, and really the, the, my project was very young at the time. I had only been doing it for about three months. Uh, but we pretty quickly started sharing content, descriptions, metadata, uh, very good very good attribution. Uh, some of the metadata, for example, that I gathered, they did not have so much, uh, or at least it wasn't systematically applied, such as uh, platform, for instance, or programming languages. Uh, they had they had a big part of that, but not everything. Uh, they certainly didn't have behavior, though those things were encoded or, or you know, described in different ways. Uh, I didn't have year information, for instance, uh, so it was very useful for me to then take that information and include it back in I Love E Poetry. We linked to each other, and that was, uh, that, that's very good, uh, both within the creative works and in general. Uh, Every one of my entries has a link back into uh, the ELMSIP knowledge base entry for that work, and vice versa. And we've benefited. Uh, we've enriched both our resources. Uh, I've added a number of entries, a couple hundred entries at least, to the ELMSIP knowledge base through I Love E Poetry. Uh, we've shared different metadata, as I described earlier. And my focus on e-poetry and e-poetics, I really uh, purposefully made the boundaries quite fuzzy, uh, are represented within the larger context, the larger field of electronic literature. And, apropos to this occasion, I use the OMSIP knowledge base data for visualizations. So, when I look at I Love E-Poetry uh, through the UMSIP knowledge base and take all all the data I can from the UMSIP knowledge base tags, works, authors, venues, years, uh, all kinds of information. I put it into Jeffy and I generate a visualization. This is what emerges. So it's this dense, dense web of relations. Notice that the largest items are the ones most used in, in, in all of these works, right? And you can see that my typology, scheduled, uh, responsive, static, kinetic, uh, these, these are rather large. Uh, one of the things that it reveals is that the systematic application of a tagging system, as I have used in my works, uh, you know, really, uh, when it enters a system like the OMSIP knowledge base that uses a freer tagging system, uh, you know, there's a lot of information that is represented, uh, but it's represented not through tags. It's part of the data on the different entries. So when we simply look at tags and then I come in with a systematic use of tags, of course mine are going to look larger. Uh, at the same time, it does give an idea of what are some of the main uh, devices, platforms, players within this. For instance, we can see Flash, HTML, and JavaScript as, you know, pretty hefty uh, uh, platforms. Uh, we can see uh, Twitter looming. Uh, we can see generative works and hypertext. Here we have two genres, 
that are rather well represented in the database and in I Love You Poetry. If we look even we can see how much information we have here. And of course, you know, we, we could spend ages exploring this web of relations. But I find it's a little bit too dense. I almost want to simplify it, and, and I did as I was preparing some visualizations. So for instance, I published a, a, a visualization of basically authors, works, years, and tags on the web, I took this, you know, a big part of this, and I presented it on the web so that people can then select the different nodes that look large and see what's in there. You can zoom in. Notice that the, the names do not appear unless you mouse over them. That's a little problem with how I designed this particular export. Uh, this was done with Jeffy. Uh, and but you can see, for instance, Java's work and how it connects not just to his works, but also to some of the some of the different um, tags that were used. You can look at the year, for instance, and explore all the works done in 2009 and some of the people that were involved there. Uh, you can then, from there, keep exploring other aspects. However, I prefer even simpler visualization. So for instance here, I, I took the tags out, authors, works, and years. And I made these uh, quite directional so you can really kind of see, uh, for example, 1998, it's only going to give you uh, works. You can select uh, different works, uh, see everything Jim Andrews made, go from there, from the year you can then move on to something else and you have if you zoom in you actually do get some of the information you need in there so you can explore it a little better Yong Hai Chang Heavy Industries you can see I've done nine works of theirs so this really helps you explore a little bit this is on the web and people can explore it and get a sense of what's going on now this is this is not an interactive one but at a glance, I like the information. It's simply all the works in I Love E Poetry and the year. And notice that representing, uh, you know, size equals number of connections. 2012 is a big year. Uh, 2011 as well. Uh, you can see the years where I have most representation of works. Uh, in part because there's more ELIT in part because there's more ELIT available, in part because it's just the, the, the publications that I chose to read and explore, you know, lay primarily on those years. And I've made a point in I Love E Poetry to try to explore old and new works. So I've taken uh, publications like Cauldron and Net that ran from 1999 through 2003, I think, and uh, and really read all of the e-poetry I could find in there and, and moved on. So, but anyways, this gives you a good sense of the coverage that I Love E Poetry is offering. Now when we pull back from I Love E Poetry and look at something larger that I Love E Poetry fits within, like say the Elmsip knowledge base, using uh, visualizations can really reveal uh, the the impact I Love E Poetry has had. Uh, for instance, here uh, we're visualizing creative works referenced in critical writing. So you can see 1800 creative works in red and 1937 works of critical writing in blue. Now I Love E Poetry is categorized as a work of critical writing. So it was originally blue, but Sure, in addition to showing its size, I want it to show its connections. So I marked it as green. I changed it as green as well as all of the creative works. Uh, I made those green. And that way we can get a sense of, of really how much I Love E Poetry has, is represented within the Elmsip knowledge base. Now, interestingly enough, when you look at the works referenced, 1958, 
is the number of connections between critical writing and creative works. So some works of critical writing reference multiple creative works, uh, and certain creative works are referenced by multiple works of critical writing. So this captures all that. We can see how Afternoon a Story, which is in red under I Love E Poetry, uh, you can see how it's a fairly large node because it has been written about quite a bit. Uh, it's one of the foundational works of electronic literature, and we can see how connected it is. Now, when you look at the unique works, this, this is works that have been written that have any connection at all. In other words, if anyone wrote about it critically, 972 works have been written about. So that's just a little bit over half of the created works in the field. Uh, you can see that 827 works have not been referenced. What's interesting about that, and these are the ones all around in the margins, right? What's interesting about that, to me, is that this is a space of opportunity. Uh, maybe the next 500 works I Love You Poetry reads will be from there. And maybe I'll have some help when I do it this time. So, the way the two networks connect uh, really shows when we look at this. And also, how, uh, let's say, connected or how thorough a reference I Love you Poetry is and needs to continue to develop to become. Think about I Love you Poetry as a project, and I think of how the visualizations helped me understand what it was I had done uh, as I was trying to represent it in different venues. For instance, what you're looking at here is a poster that I prepared for the ePoetry conference uh, back in June in London. It allows me to really represent uh, the, the resource. For instance, this, po this, this visualization, also created with Jeffy, uh, presents in yellow uh, the 31 years that, are, that this project uh, covers, and you can see that the node size, again, represents uh, the number of works uh, written about in that year. Uh, you can see the 500 green nodes that are the, the, the works reviewed, and 264 authors. And the node size there also says how many works by a given author. Uh, it doesn't give a precise number, but it gives you a sense of who is more and who is less represented. So it really helps me understand what I have done. It helps me think about the relations. It helps me think about who's represented, what years, what aspects, what genres are represented, and therefore maybe need further representation, further exploration. Uh, you know, these are the spaces of opportunity. That also gives a sense of where certain clusters are, uh, where certain interest areas are where's further research, uh, where, where I could do some further research and write more in-depth papers and really explore some of these ideas further. So doing these visualizations through the data given by OMSIP Knowledge Base has been very, very useful for me. And I would expect to continue doing this uh, as I continue developing the project. I'm about to launch phase two this week. So if you go to iloveepoetry.com or follow me on Twitter or anything like that, you'll be able to learn more about it and get connected to this sensation that is I Love E Poetry. And that's it. Well, listen, folks, thank you for listening. And uh, just so you know, it rains just as hard in Puerto Rico as it does in Bergen. We just get it in a two-hour period. Heavy rain, compressed, good time. Thank you, stay dry.